Well, um, hello. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you for being here and also thank you for the organizer for organizing this. <laughs> uh, well, first of all, I would like to um, talk a little bit about me and introduce myself and explain you why I'm here and how I end up here, no? Uh, well, I was um, born in Galicia, in Spain. Uh, it's a very little place, that's why I like to um, talk about it, because it's not very much known. And it's a place normal, with very nice people, and a little bit rainy. We are a little bit like this. <laughs> uh, but it's great. So, uh, there uh, I was um, planning my studies and I started studying industrial design, um, product development engineering, and I thought, oh my god, this seems something like this, something like Back to the Future, very cool. Uh, in fact, I was doing a degree uh, about a car, a flying car, like a little bit like a transformer or something like that, and it seems very cool. but. It wasn't exactly what I was expecting, no? Um, at my school, for example, it seems like uh, product design was just this, furniture and cars. And I was looking for something mm, quite different, no? Like um, more, mm, more linked with the user, the mm, public, more interfaces, digital product, that kind of things, no? So, uh, I realized, looking around me, that the products that I was developing, uh, a lot of them had screens, you know, and also that everything was an experience. I don't know how many of you have came here by plane, I suppose that a lot of you, <laughs> and maybe you have seen, have been seen this, like traffic lights asking you for feedback about Mm, your experience at the security control point or something like that. So now everything is an experience, no? And even this. So I'm trying to look about something with product design, industrial design, and the screens that I was talking about before. I came here to Barcelona and I started uh, studying motion graphic design. So it's everything like very different. It's not Mm, like the path you think uh, you are going to follow when you start studying. But for me, it worked. Because when I was starting, studying motion graphics, appears this vision. That's what, well, when, where I'm working now, right now. And Vision is an award-winning company um, that empowers innovation through technology and creativity. And it was like the, the link between that kind of innovation and product design that I have been studying first, and the animation, the experience, the connection with all the rest. And also, I had a great team there, and I'm very happy working there. I had so much fun. And to be honest, when I started working there, I started just as a designer, and I didn't really know what virtual reality was, and with the experience and that, I started mm, realizing that it was the future or it was what I loved, you know? The two passions that I wanted or that I loved, uh, technology and design, were together. It was like the start of the hype of VR and mm, it had no, no language, just mm, a lot of research was to be done. So, that's all for my introduction. And um, virtual reality. Okay, so what are we going to talk about? Uh, first of all, I want to say that I'm not mm, going to teach you anything new. <laughs> what I mean with this? Uh, I'm going to mm, put up on the table like a lot of things that we are used to work when we mm, work with mm, designing smartphones, well, smartphones, applications for smartphones or that kind of things, but uh, we need to uh, rethink about them for VR. It's just common sense, but until you mm, didn't start working with it, you don't realize, and it's like a lot of time, a lot of render time of um, processing, 
that you can avoid <laughs> with these kind of tips or thinking that. So I would like to, that at the end of the conference, a lot of you had uh, at least um, understood how can we work and the possibilities of the, of the virtual environment. And I would like to ask you how many of you had tried VR? Okay, that's cool. Uh, that was not exactly what I expected, but you are a very techie audience, so maybe I was wrong, no? But if I asked the general public, the numbers are not like this. Even a lot of people didn't realize what VR is, no? Because they um, are confused with this, with 360 videos. There's a big difference between uh, these drag and drop videos that you have on Facebook and the VR. Mm, we can say that there. <laughs> um, some 360 videos are part of VR, but VR is not just 360 videos. And the two mm, differences are interaction and immersion. Why is this? Uh, we can say that uh, some 360 videos are part of VR because even if you can't interact with them, you can feel immersed. And if you put on your cardboards or Oculus or something like that. For example, that's not the case of the, th of the 360 videos of Facebook, no? Then you can feel immersed. This also um, is my opinion. Maybe there are all other people that don't think about this, this way. And um, there's a lot of um, debate with this, but personally, is what I'm, I think, no? Also, of, uh, the interactivity, you know, uh, in 360 videos in general, you are uh, like the public, the audience, and you are like watching a movie, just instead of looking to the front, you can look around you. And in VR, you can be the main character of that film, you no? Know? Uh, regarding the immersion point, I would like to compare it with this, you no? Know? Uh, why we can make the difference between uh, 360 Facebook videos and 360 videos in a Samsung Gear, for example, or that kind of te technology. Because when you put on a really good uh, 360 video, when you f feel immersed, you feel like you are there, and if you are just dragging the video, you don't feel that. You can just look, and maybe it's beautiful or not, okay. but it's that kind of, of mm, reaction, no? What we are looking, we are always looking for the experience, as we are saying before. So, uh, after explaining this about the environment, uh, where, where can you start? What's different between uh, developing or designing a 360 application, a VR application, or a smartphone application, as the ones that you have in your pockets. Well, first of all, we have to mm, know that VR has no boundaries, no limits. So even if you're working with a video or with uh, an application, you need to know that if you have one effect in one part, mm, it will affect to the other one. You have to mm, be aware and take care of working in the key rectangular format. This, for example, is like a cube map for, um, uh, for a storyboard. Maybe it's not the best example, but um, for me, it's, it makes clear some point is that you need to stitch that parts together. No? So you need to um, work with deformations and with a workspace that it's not uh, what you are used to. No? That's very important. For example, uh, applying masks in, in videos no? for um, effects or retouching colors or that kind of things. If you put something in one part of the video, when you close the sphere, it's going to be a, a closing line. And that kind of things are what uh, make that the experience is not good enough because when you put on your Googles, you're you aren't going to be immersed, fully immersed. Also, uh, one of the most interesting things is that clicking is not as we know it. I mean, 
uh, by physical clicking, for example, it always exists. Uh, for Samsung Gear, for example, you have to click in one of the sites for play or that kind of stuff. But now we can click things without knowing that we are clicking something. So in the experiential way, that's very interesting um, see how people react. Uh, for this, we have an example. Uh, this January at Vision, we presented, we premiered uh, a short film um, called Escape in the um, like a festival of cinema, cin uh, film, sorry, and series. And I just told you that videos, uh, 360 videos, are not VR. So what I'm talking of this, because uh, this video was interactive. We shoot uh, four different stories, and depending on where the um, user or the main character that was the user, user um, was looking for, depending on the curiosity of the person, we change the story, we change the timeline, so it makes interactive. But those people uh, didn't know what they were looking for. For example, this is a frame of the film in an equi rectangular format. Uh, the action was in one side, and in the other part was a reflection of the people who were shooting. So if uh, the person who was looking to the video realized that uh, that's, that was weird, because that reflection didn't exist in the reality, in the storytelling. Uh, if they pass more than, I don't know, three seconds, two, three seconds, I think that it was, they, they changed the storyline. But they didn't knew it. So that kind of playing hide and seek with the curiosity of the spectator and the audience, I, I, I think that is very interesting and is one of the most uh, important things that we can play in, in VR. All of this uh, applies also to augmented reality, mixed reality, and all these kind of realities that are appearing right now. So it's like mm, very general, no? But for understanding the concept, I think that is great. Also, we have to take care of these kind of things. Uh, digital Sorry. <laughs> uh, digital products, normally, you have to work in a screen. And obviously, you have to take care of the ergonomics for designing um, where to tip with your fingers and that kind of things. But in this new world, um, you, you have to think um, more in a huge um, world, no? You have to think a little bit like an architecture. The, you, think, you need to think as a designer, you need to think as a developer, no? Uh, that's why, for example, I was explaining before that I was studying one thing and then another and then another, because to really understand this, it needs to be, um, you need to be aware of a lot of things. For example, ergonomics. Uh, you need to think about if the user is going to be seated or stand up, if mm, you are going to use some kind of mm, head-mounted display or another. And this is also uh, going to evolve. I mean, all these angles and all these things that we had uh, for one of our projects, it's a lie. In two months, will be a lie. Because if technology evolves, uh, we will need uh, another specifications, another kind of angles, another kind of uses. So we, we have to be continuously in a research mode and think always that it's a user-centered world, but with uh, the hard work, also specifications. Well. This is, for example, uh, the, the present technology I was talking about, what we have now. But, for example, uh, we have like a temporary line 
And we are in the um, two or um, second step, more or less, in eye tracking. While I was uh, talking about um, this eye tracking for the head maps for, um, for Escape, for the short film that we developed, that was like the second, third uh, step. No? But for example, the one in position tracking is the one that Google has presented as um, his, their promise for next year, no? a new standalone head map, oh, head map, headset, uh, sorry, uh, with position tracking. So that will allow to um, more in a huge world of possibilities and ergonomics and all the designs will be uh, with, um, with that, no? Mm -mm. Also, another thing that we have to take care of are visuals. No? We have typography mm, normally in smartphones and applications. For us, it's like a, a basis no? for any designer. But here, we can't. Why? Because of the resolution of the hardware. So until now, uh, we only can write in a very high legibility typography for just instructions of that kind of things. No? Um, nowadays, they are also presenting, like two weeks ago or this week, uh, a new company uh, has mm, presented like a prototype for a screen with a resolution, a human eye resolution, in theory. This is like one of the images that they presented of comparing the resolution. So if we arrive to that kind of resolution of that kind of screen, we could use uh, and improve things in typography and we will have a lot more of possibilities. Also think about this because you are used to having a screen like more or less far away, but having a screen with uh, two centimeters of distance from your eyes, you will notice more the pixel things and, and that kind of stuff. Regarding the visuals also, motion. Motion is very important mm, in, in VR. Well, I always talking about everything is very important, but motion is really important. Um, we can use it for um, moving and telling the story around uh, who is watching. And that has a lot of possibilities. For in this um, short is one of the best ones for, for understanding this. The Angelica from the Oculus Stories, um, they explain and they paint around you all the story of this girl uh, and her mom. And you really full, feel uh, fully immersed. It was like one of the only times that I could um, be immersed in a 10 minutes story with the Googles. So it's when you are used to this technology, it's weird if you can really um, be so surprised. And so with that wow effect, no? It's great. Uh, regarding motion, also we had to take a lot of care um, in how we use it, no? Because we can Mm, we can't abuse of them, and we have to take very mm, carefully mm, the, the speed uh, curves and that kind of stuff, no? Why? Because uh, when you're showing to your brain a different movement, but you are seated or you are in the same place, your brain can process that, uh, and it appears what is called motion sickness. And that will be awful for any experience, and for uh, enjoying, not, not only enjoying it or not, but for um, feeling terrible and very bad. So we have to take a lot of care with that. And also, um, it's better uh, changing the, the speed from zero to 50 uh, in one frame or in one moment than in uh, um, speed uh, curve as we are used because your brain doesn't, doesn't need that mm, time for processing that information, so you wouldn't feel sick, or so sick. So, all of this is like a little twist uh, of what we know and ap applied to VR, no? But there are some things that for me are like 
just for VR are like really innovations. No, for example, uh, the metaphors. Until now, we have teleportation. Uh, and it's something that always has been evolved, evolving with, with internet, no? From Google Earth, then Google Maps, then Street View, and now also evolves with VR. It's easier and you can feel fully immersed. That is one of the things of uh, teleportation, no? Being in another place for real. And this, we can uh, use it in different ways and in research how we can move in that space, no? And one of these uh, best uh, things for teleportation is internalization. Internalization is like a metaphor that until now we didn't use, we, we didn't know that it existed. And it appears like a whole new um, world of possibilities that you can uh, be like Inception and go from one world to another and recreate um, a, a lot of stories and um, include more gamification inside another game. So it's great. But the interesting thing of this is like that with the same movement, the internalization, we can enter or we can exit from something, because this language isn't um, established, no? So, for example, here we have uh, an example of a VR experience called Job Simulator, and it's, it's great if you can play. It's one of the most um, amazing and funny experiences, and in all our events is the hype and everyone wants to, to play, no? Here, they use the internalization for exit of the game, as if we were in an Alice in Wonderland or something like that. So that's uh, uh, um, the opposite from what we have seen before. It's the same movement, but in a twist. So the great thing of this is that, in fact, VR metaphors are not metaphors. You have it like it's literal, everything you're doing. For example, if you grab a uh, square or a cube like this, you're grabbing it for real with the remote controllers, no? Uh, until now, if we, can, we uh, were trying to move this, we will pick the arrow and move it from one side to another. Now you are there. When you internalize yourself, you get inside the sphere. Here, you are picking the object, no? So that's... Uh, a great uh, part of, of VR and what makes it so real. For the second of these um, things that are like VR um, settings, <laughs> we have triggers. Uh, I have been talking about reading triggers in, like in our short film, triggers to play with the curiosity of the the curiosity of the spectator and the audience but we have to take care we have to find like an equilibrium why because uh, it's very difficult and the people are not used to this type of kind of technology and in fact uh, people spend the 65 percent of their time looking just to the front uh, we have been with Vision in a lot of events, a lot of exhibitions, uh, a lot of people have tried VR with us, and like in the first 10 seconds, always is, oh my god, what experience, 360 videos, blah, 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 and then they just focus here in the front. So we have to take care and with emotion, with graphics, with that kind of things, um, make a narrative and make that the story goes around for um, involving the spectator, the audience, and um, making them enjoy it really the, the 360 and the VR environments because of this. They uh, didn't understand this together already, okay. uh, and they will feel like Marty McFly. <laughs> So, and in third place, I would like to talk about avatars. Like for VR and augmented reality also, uh, we are experimenting like that 
every two or three months appears something that seems uh, revolutionary for the technology. And usually, uh, it is related to hardware, for example, new glasses uh, or haptic um, gloves or new controllers, that kind of things, no? And yeah, that's another step in VR. But a few months ago, uh, Facebook presented uh, their avatars for Facebook spaces. So, uh, and then all the big companies started to think about uh, how they can include this social part in their apps or in their experiences. And this really is revolutionary mm, because it was like the part that mm, was missing from VR, you no, know, for getting it uh, really um, uh, democratized for the public, for the general public. And it will be like one of the most important things uh, in the whole in the next months. Also, because people mm, love to to make avatars from I don't know from when they are kids with uh, their mobile phones, these mm, applications for makeup, um, can, that kind of things with dolls. You no, know? until uh, now, all people like to reflect themselves. In, in another avatar, in another thing. And uh, also, they, um, there's a concept very interesting in this, and is the, the um, rooms, no? The guest host concept uh, of making private rooms, private um, chats, um, that stuff, seems for me, seems that it will be like, very interesting in the few months. And well, let's be social. <laughs> so that's all. Uh, it's very general, I know. <laughs> and after the question and ask questions and answers, I would like to ask and answer myself the this the title of the of the presentations. No, uh, VR will kill the 69 or the smartphone star. Well. This is just my opinion, no? But uh, I think that it's not going to be killed, but they will coexist in a different way. Until now, all the devices were mm, having their, their part, no? I mean, if you want to see uh, the football, uh, you go to the pub or in your, mm, in your house, you pick the television and you can watch there with your friends the TV. Or if you want to see a Game of Thrones chapter, you pick your laptop, or for a YouTube video, maybe your smartphone, no? I mean, each device has uh, her, her field, their field. Now with VR, we can include all of these screens, all of these uh, different devices inside one, just one application. You can um, have a social application, like a living room with the screen of the baseball um, or something like that, or basketball play, where you can uh, be with your friends looking at that. Uh, and maybe one of your friends is from Canada and another one from Berlin, and you are here in Barcelona, and the three of you are uh, were looking to the same to the same play. And at the same time, you can have a little screen with your tweets or WhatsApp or that chatting applications, and everything will be inside mm, this application, this uh, unique application. So. Mm, it's not going to disappear, obviously, the smartphones, and also. Mm, VR needs to uh, evolve a lot from what we know until now, but it will be um, very um, interesting to see how they coexist. And so that's it. Thank you, everyone. And if you want to ask me some questions, I'll be glad to answer them.
Hi, Laura. Hi. Thank you for the beautiful illustration. <laughs> I did learn a lot of new things, such as inter uh, internalizations. Yep. So, gracias. Thanks. You're um, welcome. <laughs> yes. So, I find myself really difficult to enjoy and even de develop uh, for VR mm -hmm. because of motion sickness. I even have like high-end devices such as Oculus, powerful mm -hmm. PC, but um, I can't really use that for long. Do you have any advice so that I can last longer in VR? Well, um, it depends a lot of the application and whether you are looking to it, but normally when someone experiments uh, a lot of problems of this, it's difficult to, to change that, no? But uh, it's true that I saw that people who, who experiment more motion sickness before, with, for example, with the DK1, from, with the first Oculus kit, uh, everyone feels motion sickness. <laughs> and uh, as the technology is evolving, uh, you are more, um, uh, people are, aren't feeling that uh, a lot. I'm now like trying to experiment and research some kind, but I don't, it's not exactly anything, <laughs> I don't know. Um, in fact, uh, this regards the equilibrium, no? and it's um, in, the, in your ear, in your inside ear, all this part. So I'm trying now with um, some of my team to um, to, um, see if with vibrations or some kind of sounds or something like that, if we could solve anything, but it's just like a concept or an idea and we are, I, I can't help more. <laughs> so there's no like yoga or massage technique? No, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right. Please keep me posted. I really okay. want to hear more about the vibration. <laughs> okay, thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you for the presentation. I have one Thanks. question about um, VR technologies and, and AR technologies in general. Even with smartphones, you see that the experiences can be somewhat isolating when people look into their phones and not paying attention to what's going mm -hmm. on around them. Uh, but at least it's an easy look up from your screen. How would you uh, see that going into the future with VR or AR technology where it seems those experiences are even more isolating, uh, you know, the, 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 the hmm. participant from the surroundings around them? Yeah, uh, of course, uh, they are more isolated in, in some parts. Uh, but also, I think that they could help that, uh, for some people who are isolated uh, themselves to make this part of social, no? With the avatars and that kind of things. People who spend a lot of time in their rooms, even playing or because they have um, some sickness or some illness that they can't go um, out uh, as much as they want. Um, they also have this kind of, that also, VR has also this kind of application, no? So you have like the, the two parts. From our part, uh, obviously, uh, for the general public, could be more isolated if you don't have like uh, a little bit of care of what we are doing. But uh, it will help also to the other kind of people. For the general public, uh, I think that at the end uh, you are not going to use that on the streets, at least um, nowadays. No, it's more for enjoying in an event, in an exhibition, at your home playing. So in that kind of uh, ambience and environments, it doesn't matter if you are a little bit or more isolated. Uh, for example, for AR, augmented reality, that, uh, yes, could be applied in the streets. And I don't know how to mm, make people be less isolated. I think that they are going to be the same. Like uh, now with Pokemon Go, people who were on the streets almost dying, that is not the technology, it's the people who don't take care. <laughs> and that's what I, I think about. <laughs> Hi, thanks Hi. for the presentation. My You're question welcome. is probably more on the uh, consumer part or the commercial part. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so I think you mentioned Facebook uh, Spaces, and yep. uh, as I remember, that concept has actually been uh, tried out before uh, in the name of uh, Second Life, and and I think it crashed and burned pretty much. So so what yeah. has changed since Facebook is actually uh, trying out again, if you want to say so? Well, uh, I think well, actually, uh, Facebook, for example. I tried the application and it's very basic nowadays. No, you can just uh, see your photographs and uh, play with uh, some kind of gadgets like take a selfie uh, inside Facebook with your avatar and post it in your Facebook. So now I think it's very basic and isn't uh, making like a big difference on what we are using it. No, at the end it's just gamification. But uh, the, when some big company uh, makes uh, this, um, I present this idea, when the rest of them follows uh, this big company and they start doing this, is what uh, is different from Second Life. Second Life was just Second Life and you didn't have more um, things, you have for example, I don't know, have a hotel <laughs> uh, also, but mm, the rest of the industry wasn't following that. Now, uh, for me, it's quite like a revolution because of that, because uh, nowadays we have Facebook spaces, we have the Oculus Rooms, uh, also another application called uh, Altspace VR, and every time there are more and more um, plays or applications or um, industries that are trying to get there. So that's why I think that in a few months it will be uh, a really um, different, no? It's not that uh, just now is cha the change, but it's re revolutionary because of that. Thanks. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, okay, so I'll try to shorten it. Uh, it's kind of related to the previous question, uh, but I was wondering more, uh, not so online and social, like uh, joining, but uh, do you think that currently or in the near future we will have a technology uh, where a group of people offline could just put on headsets and be in the same reality? Because right now, hmm. what I have mostly witnessed is a group of people have only one headset and uh, peop the person that's in the reality, you know, says like, this is cool, blah, 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 and the re rest of the group doesn't have any idea. And then he or she needs to get back to the reality, exit that experience and give the headset to the next person. And they don't have a link in the reality. Well, uh, nowadays, mm, yes, there, there are some applications that you can use in pairs or like two, three people together and interact while they are uh, to, mm, inside, no? Uh, that's quite difficult right now because of the, mm, the number of hardware available. I mean, uh, if there are not um, so many people with headsets or that kind of things, so in general, the industry maybe is not mm, developing that kind of applications for five or six people, but they exist. For example, for pairs, exist. Regarding this, I think that is more oriented to augmented reality or mixed reality. Well, while you are in the same reality, the real one, you can put on, uh, for example, HoloLens or that kind of uh, new head-mounted displays and see in the reality the same thing. I mean, if I mm, put here a hologram of a, of a table and every, each one of you had those hololens, uh, you, every one of you will see the table. And if I interact with that, every one of you will, will see it. Uh, the problem is that the hardware and the tech needs to uh, be cheaper. No? So I think that with uh, more time, uh, as the technology is evolving, also the costs will um, be lower. And as more people could have access to that technology, 
we will see this kind of applications more offline, more um, for your group, your real group in a real place, experimenting a different or a virtual reality. I don't know if I <laughs> resolve what I said. Thanks. One more question. I'm okay. just wondering how you go about storytelling, storyboarding in VR. Uh, it w with a smartphone on a screen, you have this, you know, the 16 by 9, you know, the, the, the four edges and very constrained. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you go about storyboarding, storytelling? What methodologies or processes are currently or will be used in, in designing apps or experiences in VR? Uh, is a lot taken from how games are designed or do you look more towards how movies are made? Mm, we are still experimenting and making like uh, research, no? Uh, for example, uh, personally, I, I work uh, with mm, this kind of mm, 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 here, this. No, for the action, uh, I work mm, this kind of sheets, and we try to uh, distinguish if we are uh, working in uh, CGI or in real with real persons. If we had shoot, for example, a scene, um, if you are shooting uh, and the the actors are real persons, you need to take care with the cameras that the action uh, is blocked in some part. So you have to have, uh, for example, each of these uh, squares will be a camera for for um, taking care of that, no? If you're working uh, everything digital, you don't have to take uh, that care about who's passing uh, from one side to another and it's easier, no? For in, in the technology and hardware process. Um, also, uh, I, for, um, for designing this, I use this kind of things. I work a lot uh, with um, top views, like this one, where you can see the action, you can say, okay, in the center you have the camera, and where uh, are the, um, the characters moving around? So I like to um, explain the storytelling or make the storyboards like this. And it's that trying to, to um, move the story around the person that Everywhere is um, maybe happening something, even if uh, it's not always uh, the most important action in the front. Or, for example, trying to not have uh, two important actions in two different parts. We have to uh, play also uh, with a special audio. Mm, that's something that we are, we are experimenting a lot. Uh, so maybe you have a very important action here and with a special, a special audio. Um, you heard something from here and you can move. It's like um, integrating all these um, technologies, all the team, the video team, audio, uh, the um, post-processing people. You need to know a little bit about everything to make the story great. Anything more? I think we are out of time. <laughs> So that's everything. Thanks a lot.